Hey there YouTube lovers, my name is BB8 and today I am going to talk about what Wii U games not on Switch remain and the likelihood that they will be ported over to the Nintendo Switch or Nintendo Switch 2. The reason I decided not to do a top 10 video for Wii U like I did with GameCube and 3DS ports with one for the Wii coming in 2025 is because most of my favorites from the Wii U are already there on the Switch. So I don't really see the point in doing a top 10 Wii U games that deserve remasters. So instead, I'm making this video to talk about what Wii U games are left and the probability that they will be brought over. So there isn't really that much left to cover. And with Xenoblade Chronicles X coming to Nintendo Switch in March in the form of Xenoblade Chronicles X Definitive Edition, I was triggered to talk about this video to discuss the fate of the remaining Wii U games that haven't been ported over yet. So, without further ado, Let's get into it, shall we? Starting off with the games I don't think will get ports at all, I am going to read the list of games I don't think will get ported, only because the first section will be too long if I go in depth for each individual game. So, the list consists of Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, because it wasn't well received, Sonic Boom, the Rise of Lyric wasn't well received. Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, because Mario Tennis Aces exists and also wasn't well received. Mario and Sonic at the Sochi 2014 Olympic Games, considering this is a discontinued franchise and was only a tie-in for the 2014 Winter Olympics. And the Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games is the same reason as Sochi 2014. Zombie U was already remastered as Zombie, but it's not available on the Nintendo Switch. Considering that there's three Mario Party games available on Nintendo Switch, I don't see Mario Party 10 coming, and it also wasn't that well received either so I don't see Mario Party 10 coming. Wii Party U heavily utilizes the Wii U gamepad. Wii Sports Club is not coming because Nintendo Switch Sports exists. Wii Fit U, there is no Nintendo Switch Fit yet, but I don't see Wii Fit U happening just in case. Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, I don't see coming over because Ultimate exists. NES Remix 1 and 2, isn't coming because Nintendo Switch Online exists, so does the Nintendo World Championships NES Edition, and finally, Super Mario Maker because Super Mario Maker 2 exists. So that's all the games I don't think will get ports at all. Starting off with the games I don't think are likely to get ported, because these games I don't think are impossible to get ported over, but I don't see being likely. Those games being, starting off with Star Fox Zero and Star Fox God, I don't see this one being possible for Nintendo Switch 1 because of how much it heavily relies on the Wii U gamepad. So if the Nintendo Switch 2 were to have a second screen expansion, I think Star Fox Zero should be able to work on it. But at the end of the day, the reception of Star Fox Zero was a bit mixed. So I do think this game will stay on the Wii U with no port at all. Paper Mario Color Splash is a game I don't think is likely to ever be ported. While the game may have a small following, the reception was mixed compared to other installments, such as The Thousand Year Door and its remake. 
the game does rely heavily on the Wii U gamepad for the combat system in the game, which can be a bit complicated to replicate on the Switch without two screens to work with. So the only possible way I can even see Call Splash happening at all is with a remake and not a port of the original game. But I don't think a remake of Color Splash is likely to happen, only because it's one of the least popular Paper Mario games. Game and Wario was probably one of the most unique games on the Wii U that would be d difficult to replicate on Nintendo Switch, since most of its mini games, as well as the second screen perspectives and the controls, would need heavy reworking to even function on a second screen. And since WarioWare as a series has continued on Switch with the addition of WarioWare Get It Together, I don't see Game and Wario being a high priority to be ported over. So Game and Wario is another on the list I think will remain stuck on the Wii U. And finally, finishing off this section with Nintendo Land, I honestly enjoyed this game on the Wii U. Since I was actually one of the rare few who did own a Wii U, and Nintendo Land was actually a game I got out of the box with it. But the biggest problem with bringing Nintendo Land over is that Nintendo Land was mainly designed to show off what the Wii U could do instead of functioning as an actual game. And without a second screen, a majority of the mini games would be impossible to translate onto the Nintendo Switch. And unless Nintendo makes something similar as a Switch Online exclusive game, Nintendo Land is the last of the four I don't see being likely to be ported over. Now moving on from the games I think have a low likelihood of being ported over, and now let's talk about the games I feel mixed on. Starting off with Sonic Lost World. Considering that the, it only released on Wii U, 3DS, and Steam, and the reason I feel mixed with Lost World is because this isn't as popular of a Sonic game as Generations, Colors, or something from the Adventure era, like Sonic Adventures 1 and 2, or Shadow of the Hedgehog. And even though this is not a port I typically want. I do think it will happen in a few years time. Kind of like how we've had Sonic Colors Ultimate and Sonic Cross Shadow Generations. With Lost World becoming available on all platforms, not just Nintendo Switch. Lost World is not my priority for Sonic re-releases because all four titles from the adventure era, and this may sound controversial, but Sonic and the Secret Rings, as well as Sonic and the Black Knight, urgently need the remaster treatment to fix some issues they've had with the gameplay. So I, I don't think Lost World is the high priority for the remaster treatment for that reason, but I do think it is going to happen in the next few years, even though it's not a remaster I want. Or the Sonic re-releases is for another video. It's time to move on now. Even though... Crafted World already exists on the Nintendo Switch. Yoshi's Woolly World has a unique art style and gameplay that would look great on the OLED model. The reason I feel mixed on this one is because even though it's been a few years since Crafted World came out, it may be too similar. But given that it was already re-released on 3DS before. The upcoming Donkey Kong Country Returns HD brought it up from unlikely to mixed. And the way I could see Woolly World happening on Switch is to merge both the Wii U and 3DS together to package them on the Nintendo Switch or Nintendo Switch 2. Kirby and the Rainbow Paintbrush also known as Kirby and the Rainbow Curse to you guys in the States, heavily relies on the Wii U gamepad, especially since it utilizes stylus-based controls, which won't be an issue in handheld mode, but in docked mode, 
that might be a different argument. Because they did get it to work with 3D World and Captain Toad Treasure Tracker. So maybe it's not a definite yes that it will come. But a maybe it will work on the Switch. Even though it's not my high priority for Switch ports alongside Sonic Lost World, I do really like the art style, so I am kind of curious to play this one, if it eventually does get ported over. And the last one I feel mixed on is Splatoon 1, which is an interesting one because Splatoon 2 and Splatoon 3 already exist on Nintendo Switch, so there are multiple ways this could be handled. Splatoon 4 could include a classic mode which uses the gameplay and music from the original Splatoon game, similar to Fortnite OG, and recently Overwatch 2 Classic, but the main reason Splatoon 1 shouldn't get ported is because of the story mode. Honestly, the story mode is probably the only thing that we need from the original Splatoon. But other than that, Splatoon 1 is not necessary because the story mode is the only thing we typically need out of it. And now, we have made it to the games that are possible to port. And unfortunately, we only have two of them, and I think you may already know what they are. It's The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD. Let's just start off with one thing. These two games are very divisive on if they should be ported to the Nintendo Switch or not. Because the only reason they were ported to the Wii U in the first place was because of the 10th anniversary of their perspective games. The same goes for Skyward Sword HD, which released in 2021. And considering that these are fan favorite Zelda games, I'm just surprised that these haven't come to the Nintendo Switch yet. We are only missing six Zelda games. Two of those, I think, will go to Nintendo Switch Online. And if two missing Zelda games were to make the last minute cut before the transition to the Switch 2, it's probably Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. And also, before anyone comments saying that Wind Waker and Twilight Princess will never make the cut, because I did get comments on my Pokemon port video about that, but like, but these videos are never meant to be taken seriously. So, back to the video, we're now going to talk about Wind Waker and Twilight Princess individually. Originally released on the GameCube, Wind Waker got a 10th anniversary remaster, which included upgraded visuals, improved sailing, and some quality of life improvements that helped modernize the classic. With a bright and cel-shaded art style, ocean-based exploration, Wind Waker is a game that has a soft spot in the Zelda community. And given how well the Wii U port was, was received, despite not selling well, will Nintendo finally give it its final chance to be ported over to the Switch before the Switch 2? Because honestly, in my opinion, Wind Waker HD is too beloved to be trapped behind the Wii U. So I think as one of the last first party Switch 1 games being remakes and re-releases of older games, I think Wind Waker would fit in there perfectly. And the same goes for Twilight Princess, which originally released on both the GameCube and the Wii, which also got a 10th anniversary remaster on the Wii U as well, but unlike Wind Waker, Twilight Princess is more darker and mature for the Zelda series, and the Wii U version of Twilight Princess brought in improved visuals, amiibo support, and the mechanics being more streamlined. The only issue I would say with Twilight Princess HD is because we do have menu features within the Wii U gamepad. I don't think it would be hard to implement them in, only because the gameplay is not reliant on the Wii U gamepad like other Wii U games. And I think Twilight Princess HD could work on one screen if handled right. And considering that both 
Wind Waker and Twilight Princess are often brought up together as missing Wii U titles from the Switch library. And no matter how we see them get ported, rather it be releasing them individually or as an HD collection, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess are my two biggest priorities for the Wii U ports at the moment. And I think there is a chance we will get Wind Waker and Twilight Princess HD as one of the last first party games on Switch 1. So guys, what did you think of my video talking about the Wii U games that remain? This is the best alternative I can come up with for a top 10 Wii U games that deserve remasters video because there honestly isn't that many left to port. So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and turn your notification bell on so you don't miss another video like this one in the future. And I will see you all in a future video. BB8 out.